What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome bite to the channel. Welcome bite to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. And today we're gonna be taking a look at my top 12 running back rankings for rookies as of March 23rd. We still have the NFL draft. We still have bunch of pro days to go because all the chumps that didn't want to run at the combine want to run later like Isaiah Spiller still making excuses about a hamstring now after it was an abdomen at the combine all that stuff is yet to be accounted for but it is also player comp drop day on playerprofiler.com so if you head over to playerprofiler.com you will see the best comparable player now loads on the top of every rookie page I believe it's for every rookie maybe some that didn't do any athletic testing might not have a comp up there but for the most part the rookies have their comps up there. So I wanted to go through my 12, top 12 running back rankings for rookies. And then I wanted to look at their comps on player profiler, talk some shit about them, as well as compare them to my comps. So you're going to get two player comps, both from player profiler, from me, and see where they differ, see where I think the stylistic attributes of these runners differ. You know, I think we've done player comps for like half the content creators on this channel have already done. I know Noah, both Noah's did player comp videos. So I need to like you know, I, I felt a little bit left out. I'm starting to feel lonely. It's almost sad boy spring. The summer's, you know, the, the weather's getting nice out of here. So, of course, I, I didn't want to be, you know, picked last in the game of recess kickball. So here I am doing some running back comps for you, as well as giving you my top 12 running back rankings. I dropped my rookie rankings on Twitter and Instagram like last week or two weeks ago. So I'm going to use those as a reference. We're going to put them up somewhere wherever the editors think is most efficient in this economy. And, uh, and you guys can follow along. So you'll get to see like my entire rookie rankings page, which again is up on Twitter or Instagram or some shit if you're following me at Nick Ercolano. And we're probably gonna have some breaking news as we do this video. I'm sure I'm gonna hear Animal and Tony scream about where Tyreek Hill went. And I've already made it official. I've made a proclamation. This happened a couple of days ago. So don't be calling me a fucking front runner if Tyreek Hill ends up in gang green. But if the Falcons end up using their first round pick on Desmond Ritter for whatever fucking reason, I haven't heard him placed there. I haven't heard rumors or reports of it, but nothing, nothing would surprise me with this franchise at this point. If we take Desmond Ritter with our first round pick, I am officially pivoting to becoming a New York Jets fan. All right, we're, we're recording this on Wednesday. You guys are going to see it on Friday, I believe. So there might be a little bit of disconnect between the shit that comes out of my mouth. There might be three disconnects. What happening in my brain compared to what comes out of my mouth what comes out of my mouth connected to the real world, what's actually happening because we're two days behind and two days in free agency world is like two years. But that's why we're doing a rookie video today because nothing's changing with these rookies because they have nothing going on. All right, I'm ready to get into the video. If y'all are ready, you won't tell me, you won't show me, actually you will show me by tucking your shirt in. Going full fucking hoodie under the belt. We're gonna stop yelling. And if your traps are smaller than mine, you'll be able to eat. Okay, so we have RB1. He was my RB1 pre-combine. He was my RB1 in 2019 and 2020. I never change. You know what? People like to fucking ebb and flow with the waves that they think are cool or they're trying to be cute on Twitter. People switch it up to Isaiah Spiller as the RB1. I'm going to right bike the fucking Brees Hall. Now, Brees Hall is my RB1. He's my 101. My comp for him was Aaron Jones. Now, I knew this was just a stylistic comp. Obviously, he is much bigger. He's 5'11", 217, so he's got like 15 pounds on Aaron Jones pretty much. Now, his combine was ridiculous, right? Like, here's the thing with the best comparables on Player Profiler. They they have like a database. They don't they don't handpick these, okay? So they put they input the numbers. They put in the size, the speed, the speed score, the burst score, all the college production as well, and it spits out the best five comparables based on all of the data that they've gathered from previous running backs. And it goes all the way back to as you'll see, we have some crazy comps as we go down the list here. But it takes what it gives it, right? Like no one is looking at Brees Hall. Brees Hall is not like the explosive player that Jonathan Taylor is. Despite him running a 4-3-9, I still think there's some fucking fugazi out there, whatever the timing situation was at the combine. I don't really believe that that's his real speed. However, when you input that data, it comes back with Jonathan Taylor because he's 5'11", 217. Jonathan Taylor is like, you know, six foot, 225 or whatever. So you have the big frame. You have the body, you have the elite breakaway speed. And that's where it comes out the comparable. But they also do, Player Profiler has, this is not sponsored whatsoever. I'm just a huge fan of the program, obviously. They have under their data analysis tool, which is like a, a paid premium tool on their page. All this stuff is free. You can go on their website right now. But if you pay for their package, I think it's like $80 a year maybe. 
and you go to the top menu bar under fantasy tools and you click on data analysis, you can export the top five best comparable players. I can't really give that out to you because again, that's behind the paywall. That's their proprietary information. And I'm not out here snitching. Okay. We ain't Brees Hall, Breezy Hall, Jonathan Taylor. The other comps are also like really fucking good players. All right. And that's going to come with the territory of the scoring and the uh, the testing that he had. I think the overall gist to take away here from, I mean, basically based on the comps, he's like a can't miss prospect. I don't think I put Brees Hall into that realm of players because I don't actually think he's the explosive player that came off with it in terms of combine testing. But I do think talent wise, he's as good of a runner as a guy like Aaron Jones, who's really, really fun. You put Aaron Jones in a 220 pound frame and you have arguably one of the top running backs in the NFL. So Brees Hall, Comp on player profile, Jonathan Taylor. My comp for him personally was Aaron Jones, and he was my RB1. My RB2 in this class is Kenneth Walker. I have him down at the 107. My comp for him was Noshan Moreno, okay? He is a back with size. Now, he's not overly big, 211 pounds, but he's 5'9", which puts his BMI in the 75th percentile. His comp on player profiler, Ladanian Tomlinson. I get it. That's a little bit dramatic. Again, they don't handpick these. They do it based on everything that came out. And that 4-3-8 40-yard dash, the speed score in the 96th percentile is what really catapulted him up there. I get it. I actually, I guess I could see a little bit of the similarity. I was a little worried that Kenneth Walker was going to come in at like 203 pounds or 205 pounds or something. And at that point, I mean, you don't really have a problem. But then when you look at a guy who's just like, he's a pure two-down runner, for the most part, or that's what he's shown us up to this point. When you're a two down runner and you're 205 pounds, you know, you're, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place there. It's like, you think an NFL team is going to feed a 205 pound running back 20 carries and not use him on the third down? Or are we just going to presume he's a third down back without having cat catching any passes in college? Okay. So Tomlinson, obviously that's fucking dramatic. I had, I had no Sean Moreno who excels on first and second downs, you know, no Sean Moreno, man. Like he didn't have a, a great consistent long career. But he had a couple of seasons of 1,500 total yards and double-digit touchdowns. And, like, that is very much in the realm of outcomes for Mr. Kenneth Walker. So comp for me was no Sean. Comp for player profile, Ladanian <laughs> Tomlinson. Uh, next up, we had Isaiah Spiller. And this is unfortunate, man. We were first on this fucking scene, man. I got on here and said I, I wasn't in love with Spiller. He reminded me a little bit of Miles Sanders. He's more athletic than he is actually a good compilation of a great NFL running back. Then, obviously, you all know Noah at this point, And Noah has been shitting on Isaiah Spiller like a fucking diaper at this point since the, the first video we ever got on me and Noah together two months ago back in January was saying that Spiller was the most overrated running back in this class and now everybody's followed our fucking wave that we created like we're like we're God out here creating tsunamis Isaiah Spiller type tsunamis and now everybody's grabbing their surfboards and their boogie boards and they are riding our coattails as is the best comparable TJ Yeldon from the combine he only did his burst activities which is the vertical jump the broad jump and just kind of tells you how explosive a player is in that sense he did not run until his pro day and I think yesterday we didn't really get an official time but I believe he ran like a 4.59 you add 0.05 to that so realistically that's like a 4.64 and that's not like a death blow by any means but you add that onto the unimpressive profile that he put up in school and I think you have a little bit of uh issue there now my comp for him again was Miles Sanders and he's not as explosive as Miles Sanders so that could present a little bit of a issue you know Miles Sanders has been super disappointing in terms of fantasy over the last few years but every once in a while he breaks out those like 80 yard touchdown runs and you're like okay sick and Spiller doesn't really have that in his repertoire so his best comp on player profile is CJ Yeldon and that's you know Take that for what it's worth. We have my RB4 as well, and I might throw Rashad White over Isaiah Spiller at some point throughout this draft process, depending on draft capital, but they have Rashad White comped at David Johnson levels. You have six foot 214. This dude's running a 448, really good 40 yard dash, really good speed score, really good burst score. This guy had a college target share in the 18.9% range, 98th percentile. Now, my comp for Rashad White was Kenyon Drake, Lamar Miller, guys who were almost more athletes than they were running backs. And I guess you could say that for David Johnson. I just feel like that is like a really, really lofty, like upper echelon reaching a little bit comparable here. And again, if you have the player package, like you'll get to see the other five comps to him and they're probably a little bit less uh, dramatic or hyperbolic. So I, I had Kenyon, Kenyon Drake, Lamar Miller, guys who are a little bit more upright runners, a little bit more patient at the line of scrimmage, but have that explosion, right? Straight uh, long speed if you give them the hole to hit. And they're really good on third downs. They can catch passes. They can contribute on all three downs and they have good requisite size and speed together. I think Rashad White's a little bit raw right now at the running back position as was and as has been like Kenyon Drake pretty much and Lamar Miller until he kind of broke out and uh, was given the chance to be the guy there. So I have Rashad White down at the 202. He's my RB4. The comps there are a little bit 
out of control between myself and uh, what they have on player profiler. Next up, my RB5 is Amir White. I really like the comp here for him on player profiler is Damian Williams. My comp for him was Damian Harris. He is much more explosive than Damian Harris. So he's got that 440 speed, puts him in the 95th percentile. Again, this is one of those that like, I'm probably going to take that speed with a little grain of salt. Although he is, you know, he has been shown to, to break away in college before and he can hit the, uh, the sideline and rip up the hash marks uh, next to the, the opposing sidelines there and break away a 40, 56 yard run. So he's definitely more explosive than Damian Harris. So imagine a, you know, a banger inside run that's really good and has good vision and contact balance, but you add in some home run speed and you have a really, really fucking good player. So Dam- uh, Zamir White's my RB5 in this class. Best comp, Damian Williams. Now, Damian Williams, if you look at his profile, super fucking athletic player and has been good with Kansas City when he's gotten the chance. Like if his best comp on here is Joe Mixon. 5'11", 222, 445 speed. He went undrafted. There were some off the field issues and didn't really get a chance till later in his career. But when he did, he did better than most NFL running backs would do. So I like the comp for Zamir White on Damian Williams. Damian Williams, much better pass catcher, though. Uh, Zamir White was never involved in the passing game. So that's the only knock I'd have on him. And that's why I said he's more probably Damian Harris than he is Damian Williams. Moving on to our RB6, I have a, a pretty big tier gap here going from Zamir White at 205 at RB5 down to Tyler Algier at 211 RB6. My comp for him is like Tevin Coleman slash James Conner on the upper echelon of things, and he tested out pretty poorly. 5'11", 224, so he's got the size, but a 46040 speed score, you know, over average, I guess, so it's not terrible, but his burst score is really, really poor as well. Best comp on here is Zach Moss. I could totally see that. Someone who's just not very quick in between the tackles, someone who, like, can be elusive, can be like a banger who racks up volume, and this was always the guy I thought he was. I was off the Tyler Algier fucking bus before we hit the comp. Combine and I was like, listen, I, I think the upside here will come from whether or not he's actually a fast player. He had a lot of breakaway runs in college where like the line would open up really big holes against shitty competition and then he would blast through for 60 yard touchdowns. We come to find out that like you're not doing that at 4 6 0, 40 yard times, right? Like, you're not doing that at, at the NFL level when you're not fast breakaway home run speed type player so those fucking runs that he had were fake news they were farcicals okay and that's what i think we have here at the next level so he's a guy that if a team wants to draft him early wants to give him you know high volume or something like that he can be a good player at the next level i just think the ceiling is kind of wiped out by his athletics i had him as tevin coleman because i think he's a straight up runner i think he's a guy who like hits the hole and kind of is given what he what he's given he gives you what he's given in terms of the offensive line now I do think he's got a little bit more upside than than Tevin Coleman. I did put the James Conner again in that like range of outcomes because he can play on all three downs. He was a, a good pass catcher and he's a little bit more of a banger than Coleman. Coleman's like one shot is just fucking hitting it, right? He's taking one shot at tequila and that's like what he drinks for the entire night. I think, you know, Tyler Algier might fuck around and like bang a little bit. He might crack open a, a fucking Steve Weiser, a Budweiser and double chug them shits every once in a while. I wouldn't expect him to be the party animal all the time, but he's got that in his repertoire if he needs to show off in front of a sorority or whatever, okay? So we are going to move away from Tyler Argyle to Brian Robinson, and this is beautiful. This is a beautiful thing here. B-Rob, best comp, Gus Edwards. My best comp, Gus Edwards. Let's fucking go. B-Rob, good two-down banger. Never really going to be more than that. He can be an efficient player if he's in a good offense. Like Gus Edwards is someone that obviously benefits from running behind Lamar Jackson in Baltimore's offense. Every running back over the last fucking five years has averaged 5.3 yards per carry or more running in that offense. You put Gus Edwards in in New York, either New York team, you put Gus Gus Edwards in Miami or Houston, like, you know, what are you going to have? A 4.2 yard per carry banger. And I think that's what Brian, Brian Robinson really is. To be honest, he's a guy that you're not going to throw a lot of balls to. I know they did actually in college. He caught like 30 fucking five receptions his senior year. Uh, before that, he had six receptions, 11 receptions, zero, zero receptions. So I think it was more of a product of like being a dump off player. I don't think he's going to be asked to run routes. It, it's nice to see that he can catch the ball if needed to at the next level. But like Brian Robinson, again, the 40 yard dash time just seems really weird when the burst scores down there in the 15th percentile. So I think he can be fine between the tackles, but I'm not like overly excited about him as you're not really ever going to get overly excited about Gus Edwards for more than, you know, 15 seconds like we did last summer. We move to the next running back in my rankings. This is RB8, Kevin Harris. Oh, this is a tough one because I was, I was out on Kevin Harris. I was really, really not into Kevin Harris when I watched the film. And then both Noah and Ray G 
were like, dude, I love Kevin Harris. So I was like, I got to go back and watch it. And like my one thing was like, he just seems again, like a two down guy who doesn't offer much in terms of pass catching. He doesn't offer much in terms of elusiveness. He's a banger. He's a guy that can, if, if they give him an open hole, he's going to fucking hit it. And he has the home run upside ability of a player that can, you know, burst off a 50 yard touchdown run. And that was very apparent on tape, but I just didn't like what else I saw. But those two guys, Noah and Ray G were just like, yo, I like Kevin Harris. I like Kevin Harris. I like Kevin Harris. So I know that every once in a while, it's a very, very long stretch. I don't get shit wrong often, but when I do, I try to learn from it. Okay. So I said, listen, these two smart guys like this guy, let me reconsider. Let me see what he does at the combine. He performed really well in the in the burst scores. I don't know what he did at his pro day. I don't think they have official times yet. But his best comp came out to carry on Johnson, which is obviously, you know, could be worrisome depending on how you see carry on. I feel like was on a path for a good career. He got derailed by injuries. But then again, you could just say that overall it wasn't a good career. Right? Like if you drafted carry on Johnson in fantasy, then you just you were never happy with it. Right. He gave us like spurts of good weeks and shit. And that's like every wide receiver, every running back in the NFL, like gives you weekly upside. But the ones that you actually care for, the ones that are actually good fantasy players are the ones that give you consistent weekly upside, not just every four weeks to get you excited about them. And that's what Karrion Johnson did. That might be what Kevin Harris does. So I think we kind of met in, in the middle there where I didn't like him. Those guys liked him. Player profiler doesn't seem to love him based on his comps. Um, but Kevin Harris, bigger player that has legit long speed here. Damian Pierce is next up in my rankings. I have Damian Pierce as my RB9 and they have him compared to Tyson Williams. He didn't really perform great at the combine. He's just very average, pretty much across the board, but 5'10", 218. He's someone that really, really sticks out as, as someone who's going to be a better pro player than he was a college player, especially statistically. Because if you look at his box score from his time at Florida, he just was not used very much. When you watch him play and you look at the advanced analytics in terms of just like what he did on a per-touch basis, efficiency, yards created, like his yards per out run, and all these things were very, 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 very highly ranked analytically among the rest of the class. So I love Damian Pierce, and I comped his game to a mixture of like Mike Davis and Clyde edwards helaire Those two guys who are not amazing at, on any three downs, but are definitely above average on all three downs. They're very, very shifty. They're elusive. They can catch passes. And I think Damian Pierce is a smaller guy, right? Like smaller, lower to the ground, but he's got that. He'd be doing this in the locker room often because he's thick. He's He's doing this, but he doesn't actually have to like fake it. You know what I mean? He's he's a he's a thick guy with a a real real nice little BMI score there in the 77th percentile. When I think of Mike Davis, when I think of Clyde Bertoller, I think of like shorter but stockier guys who are low to the ground and are easily laterally moving across the field. And that's the way I think of uh, Damian Pierce. So I, I really like Damian Pierce. I think he's going to be a good player at the next level. Pierre Strong is next up. I have him as my RB10. Down at the 305 best comp, Elijah Mitchell. My comps for him were literally a combination of Elijah Mitchell and Raheem Mostert. So we were spot on there, player profiler with BDGE. Great fucking minds. Great minds do a lot of Adderalls. The saying goes, I believe. But Pierre Strong came in 5'11", 207, ran a 4'37", 40-yard dash. Now, I don't think of Elijah Mitchell as a breakaway player. I don't think anyone should. I get that he was really good at the combine last year. He came in way undersized, but way faster than we thought he was. I thought he was going to be like a 218-pound player that ran like a 4.57, but he came in at, I think, 205 pounds and ran a 4.4, like flat or something. So Pierre Strong's profile in terms of like size and athleticism matches more to Elijah Mitchell. But in terms of actual play style, he reminds me so much of Raheem Mostert, where he'll hit that home run if you give him any space. The majority of his runs, the majority of the plays that were based around Peter Strong in college were outside stretch plays. Like they just, you know, the quarterback reached out as far as he possibly could. He had Pierre Strong hit the tackle, whether it was right right tackle, left tackle, and asked him to hit the corner, right? That's way more Raheem Mostert's style of play than Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell's better inside. I do think Pierre Strong is better inside than Raheem Mostert is, which is why I think it's a combination of both those guys. Those are two pretty good fucking players to have pieces and attributes of into your game. So we were spot on there. We move over to my RB11. And that is, oh, fuck. I had Kyron Williams as my RB11. And uh, I had comped him to Geo. I had comped him to Geo before the combine happened when people were saying he was the next Austin Eckler. He came in and just was an awful, awful athlete, undersized as well as 194. So his best comp in player profiler is James White. Makes sense. I think he's a little bit different. He's a better runner than James White is for sure. He's much better in between the tackles and just overall elusiveness, which is why I have him as, as Geo Bernard. 
And uh, we'll see what draft capital does. 306, he might end up in like the sixth round. There might be an NFL team that loves him and just drafts him in like the fourth round just because they watch his tape and one executive that's fucking 65 years old is eating fucking flaming hot Cheetos in the boardroom when the draft is going on. Says, I like Kyron Williams and I own the fucking team and I my bank account is 49 zeros in it. So you do what I say. That could be a Kyron Williams situation. He's a player that would have that type of backing in a front office. So you can go fourth round. I could see him just based off the testing and the size though, also going like sixth, seventh round. In that case, he'll drop pretty significantly down my board. He is my RB11. Uh, James Cook is my RB12. My comp for him was kind of like a Miles Gaskin. So they have Andre Ellington, which I kind of like. Andre Ellington was pretty exciting for a second. James Cook is going to be a better third down back. He's going to be a better pass catcher at the next level than he is first two down backs. He's not even close to his brother, Dalvin Cook, in terms of what a runner is. 5'11", 199. So he's a bit undersized, but he did run a 4'4'2". So he's got that explosiveness to his game that unlimited opportunities he can make big plays. And that is pretty much what Andre Ellington brought to the field. Yeah. And those are my top 12 running backs. I had a couple more listed on the sheet. I had Zaquandre White next up, but we don't have any testing numbers from him. Jerome Ford, I had as my RB14. I comped him to Chuba Hubbard, came in as a guy who's just like his only calling card is basically straight line speed. And that's kind of what we saw. And uh, yeah, I mean, you guys can go check out the comps on player profile. They're up listed. I got to go get ready for this Tyree Kill video because that's about to drop. The, that news is about to drop anytime. So you're actually going to watch this after Tyree Kill video, even though I filmed it beforehand. So you have my top 12 rookie running back rankings. We have Brees Hall. We have Kenneth Walker. We have Isaiah Spiller. We have Rashad White. We have Zamir White. We have Tyler Algier, Brian Robinson, Kevin Harris, Damian Pierce, Pierre Strong, James Cook, or Kyron Williams, James Cook. Top 12, I guess, Quandre White, Jerome Ford is my top 14. So it's it's a pretty fucking nice overall group up until probably, I think right after Pierre Strong, it kind of falls off. I don't have a lot of interest in Kyron Williams, James Cook. But up until then, the first 10 backs, I kind of like a lot. A combination of size, speed, pass catching ability, shiftiness overall. A lot, a lot to like there in this class, man. Their their combine athleticism really like boosts them up a lot. So interesting class. If you have the late second, early third round, mid third round, late third round picks, you're going to be able to get a handful of these guys together. So it's uh, an intriguing class overall. Uh, let me know if you guys enjoy this video. I literally just feel like I rambled for 20 minutes. I don't know if it was valuable whatsoever. I could do this for my top 12 wide receiver rankings as well and kind of go through the stylisticness of the players in my top 12, but like, I don't, I don't know, like who cares about wide receivers? Am I right? Like it's all about the fucking run bikes. If you're listening via podcast, I would absolutely love it if you were to just, you know, just leave a fucking rating and review and hit the button that has five stars on it and hit the last star on it and then tell me how beautiful I am in my Felix Gray blue light blocking glasses. Tell me how beautiful I am without them. Just, just, just leave me a bunch of good shit about my insecure looks on the podcast review. All right, I'm out. I love you. Thank you.